Well, it's Tuesday. Yep. And for the next few weeks, mm -hmm. we're going to be messing with some of my favorite products. And uh, the problem is, are they on the market or are they not on the market? Oh, interesting. Sometimes they're on the market, sometimes not. Sounds like Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> it's Hartford products. Oh, right. And it's large-scale model railroad stuff, 20th scale, 20.3 um, scale. And the Hartford line was around, and, and uh, you'd see it at the train shows, and everybody loved it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Mr. Hartford sold that off to a company, and it became very difficult to get a hold of. And some of the stuff was being made, and some of it wasn't. And then Mr. Hartford was getting that product line back. Anyway, Dave Roten down in Cedar City ended up with the whole line. And then Dave's been having health issues, and, and, mm. and he's got Ozark miniatures, and his Hartford part of it. Well, his son's got everything back on the website, well, good. but I don't know what they're really making and what they're not. Oh. And the product I want, we want to look at today is on their website, but it says not available. Oh, heavens. But at least in, in being able to talk to Dave about it, it's like he said this was the hardest thing in the entire Hartford line to produce, and they were only able to make a few. And I literally begged and pleaded, and I said, <laughs> can I get one of those few? And, and he sold it to us. <laughs> it, it came in a box uh, yeah. with professional labeling. That's my writing, because it just came in this plain white box, and that way I could kind of tell what in the world was in here. But it's a Frick steam tractor. Oh. And and actually calling it a steam tractor is not an appropriate <laughs> thing. It's a no. Because it isn't self-propelled. I see. They would use it in logging and that sort of thing. But it was more of a portable power system, and they could take it out on the railroads and uh, just set it up in the forest somewhere and do a power takeoff and oh. run a saw or run equipment off cool. of it. But it wasn't self-propelled. So it isn't a tractor in that sense of the word. Well, I've got the whole kit here. Oh my, I see a lot of parts. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, and, and assembling this guy might be a little bit interesting, but uh, at least we've there's got one. There's your instructions. There's the, the book of instructions. And it starts off in big, bold letters by saying, if all else fails, read the instructions. So they probably had some phone calls. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, you know, that could be a good philosophy to follow anyway. For all the way around. But it's got, they're, they're really nice instructions. Not that, that I've built this yet to know if they make any sense. <laughs> right. But I love that the parts are detailed and numbered. And numbered. So this that you that can part. kind of, this is that problem we've been getting with those kits uh, that, that right. you buy out of China and Korea and occasionally Japan that have been translated through software and it'll say something to the effect of part 73-411 assemble with glue. Yes, stick with stick, stick. not even assemble, yeah, stick, stick with, with glue. glue. And it's like, and I do. okay, and which is that part? <laughs> no explanation, no yeah. number, no anything. No, anyway, this, this I think is going to make a lot more sense. I hope so. And back when Hartford was, uh, when, when Mr. Hartford was actually producing these, uh, they were written up in a lot of the magazines. And the only complaint was, oh my heck, this thing is so fragile. If you build it, Strap it to a, a flat car if you're going to use it as a, as a flat car load, and then don't mess with it because it's got working parts. Oh! And, and everybody said the same thing. If you try to raise up the smokestack, it'll just break off. If you try to, because things are hinged and rotating, they said park it. Either turn it into a flat car load and chain it down to a flat car and then never mess with it, or park it in the woods and then <laughs> never mess with it because it's so fragile. But it is principally uh, white metal castings. And, um, and so this is one of the ones that, that Dave made off of Hartford's molds. And um, let me see if I can get uh, one of the parts out of here and we can actually look at it. It's a nice part. So this is all resin cast. 
parting line. Okay, no, okay. Um, but it's a, it's that urethane fun. material. It's light. It's there's not and much to it. And he's put a coloring in it so it isn't that brown. I think so that if you didn't want to paint it, you wouldn't have to. Oh yeah. Um, it's a reasonable looking casting. Yeah, it's not bad. A lot of these castings seem to be impregnated with sawdust. Oh, serious. This one isn't. And sometimes they smell of creosote. This one doesn't. Um, and then it also has uh, white metal right. bits and pieces. Oh. And, uh, and of course, that was Dave Roten's, uh, is Dave Roten's and, and Ozark's. You know, they've got a whole bunch of casting machines and people doing the white metal casting. Hmm. And they always do first class yes, white metal casting. Yes, those parts casting. are awfully fragile, so, too. Then these are fragile. And then, of course, Ugh. boy, you've got to paint these and you got to use an automotive primer because nothing wants to stick to white metal and, mm. and so on and so forth. Anyway, there's the white metal parts. Uh, here's some little small, and, and you can tell that they're fragile because of the very delicate way mm -hmm. that the rotents have. have uh, but up. not all of these parts are fragile. And this is the one that's not fragile. And I have had this one out just to amaze myself. Um, but this is the main body oh, that's of cool. the unit. And I would swear that it's actually like a cast iron casting. Oh yeah, there's some weight to that. But it's a it's a urethane casting. Oh, this is urethane. But I think he's probably cast it around some piece of metal or something. I don't know why the thing weighs so much. But what would you guess? Um, oh, kilogram, something like that. It's it's pretty half heavy. Half a pound. Half. Yeah. Yeah, at least yeah, that for sure. At least that for sure. But if you'll notice, it's also got little bits of like sawdust. Yeah. And I'm not sure, but I think possibly what happened is when they were making these parts, their original plan was to pack the whole thing in like a sawdust. And when that didn't work out, they took everything out of the sawdust and packed it in bubble. I don't know, because a lot yeah. of the parts are covered with sawdust. Um, mm, that's really neat. Here's another one of the wheels. Of course, it's got four wheels. Mm. Um, and, and some of these are going to really require some cleanup work mm -hmm. because the, they've got little burrs. They've and got little burrs and, and imperfections mm. of various kinds. Right. And um, at any rate, um, I, I'm thinking of making this and uh, just simply putting it on a, a flat car, using it that as a be, flat car right, load. Because right. I think I think it would make a spectacular flat car load. And there's the very fragile smokestack. Oh, look at that. Wow. Um, but the really fragile part is, and see here again, there it's again, all it's covered all with covered. sawdust. Yeah. And I'm not sure why. Um, but right here, is where a pin goes through and then this is a hinge section so when you're transporting this on a flat car the stack is down and then when you set it up in the trees oh, it goes that way you stand it up and um, and and this is these are just such fragile little oh, bits man. and pieces and with a brass pin through there and it would break easy and so what the magazines were saying years ago when these things were available readily available is either model it down or model it up, but mm. don't try to don't and try it, to put it up and down. I did see where one person had gone through and machined that whole area out of brass and just mm, started all started over, started over, so that they could run it up and down. And in fact, they reconstructed this whole thing because it's also solid, right? Instead of being a tube and that, right. a solid smokestack wouldn't be. <laughs> Darn creosote. Yeah, so, and, and actually, I could see doing that because with the telescoping tubes the way they are. Right, that'd be easy. This would not be a difficult no, thing not to, to fabricate. Right. But uh, I've had this guy in the back of my mind, and I'm sort of thinking that as the logging railroad gets finished, um, I may want to spend a little more time working here at the workbench as opposed to over there on the railroad all the time. A few things. And the garden railroad is going to be, and, and it's 100 degrees out there right now. The right. temperature we has just risen. Can't catch a weather break, no matter what we do. Not too keen on dismantling, and we've got to dismantle the outdoor part and 
kind of start over Rethink because the, whole the, thing. the sun is out there baking the wood parts and just ruining the whole thing. Anyway, there it is, the Frick, <laughs> the Frick family tractor. And um, that must be a good company name. Yeah. Because I worked in a meat packing plant and uh, yeah, some of their equipment was Frick. Was Frick. Yeah. yeah and was... at the time I'd snicker. <laughs> yeah, snicker. Yeah, it's hard to say that and not snicker. Frick. <laughs> especially if you say it wrong. Right. <laughs> Anyway, this is still listed in the Ozark Miniatures, Hartford part of the Ozark Miniatures website, and it just says unavailable. And maybe it'll be available. Maybe mm -hmm. one would pop up on eBay. Um, we, we saw that uh, case tractor. Right. We just driving down the street, and there's a case kick tractor parked along. Actually, Steve told us. He told us it was there. It was to like, go find okay, it. And, it and we did, and sure enough, there it is. And we really love seeing some of these old mm -hmm. case tractors and stuff mm -hmm. out at yeah, some of these history. steam ups and right. just, just neat old equipment. And mm -hmm. so I've 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 been hankering to put this this sucker together. Yeah, it'll be fun. And um, and they just uh, they may just be get thing. around to that once the logging railroad and because what a great addition to the logging railroad. I think it would be really cool. Yeah, I think it would be a it nice. It would be addition. a really fun thing yeah. to have out on the logging railroad, the Frick tractor. Anyway, if you, uh, if you haven't been over to the website, uh, actually the channel, we have a website, but it doesn't do it much. It doesn't do much. It's, no. We haven't messed with it in a long time. <laughs> if you haven't been over to the channel, pop over to the channel, and if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And the way to subscribe is the blue button. Mm -hmm. Are we ready for that? Zoink! Right there, blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet, and we hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you on Sunday as we're just about ready to start moving the logging railroad up on the wall. Uh oh, yeah, <laughs> scary. Scary. See you then. We'll see you. Bye. Bye. -bye.